I wasn't sure what to make of this book when I started it. The only reason I read Seculosity was because a longtime viewer of the channel recommended it. And I gotta say, great recommendation. Seculosity is an ideal read to evaluate the idols in your life. And I think this book would be especially good to read to start off on a new year. If you feel like the 21st century world is running you ragged, and the very things that were intended to make your life better are instead making your life feel impossible, Seculosity is the book for you. Welcome to Rev Reads, your home for book reviews from the perspective of a pastor. If you're new to the channel and want to discover more insightful and challenging books, please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the most current reviews. If you're a regular to the channel, please like, share this video, and help others discover the dangers and pitfalls in our postmodern seculosity. This doesn't happen all that often, but I really have nothing negative to say about seculosity. I enjoyed it that much, although enjoy might not have always been the right word. Even when I was troubled by David Zoll's insight into the places where I am setting up my own idols, I still found his wisdom to be seasoned with honey, or you could say this book is like medicine that goes down with a spoonful of sugar. Zoll argues that one of the reasons people are going to church less and less today, we have replaced the religion of Christianity with a smorgasbord of religions from our various obsessions like with our cell phone, to the manner in which we parent our children, to our food, to the way that we cheer for our favorite sports teams. Now, when you read through this book, some of the chapters you will read and you'll laugh along with ease because you're not someone who treats that part of your life as a religion. For me, this was the chapter on food. I could sit and read that with ease because while I certainly have foods that I prefer more than others, give me a steaming bowl of crawfish etouffee and I will love you, but I don't base my worth or my morality based upon my food. I'll eat my wife's home cooking. I'll eat Drago's char-grilled oysters. I'll eat McDonald's McDoubles, and none of those options will make me feel any better or any worse about myself than the others. I just try not to overeat, so food isn't really a big thing for me. But it was still fascinating and enlightening to read all the ways that food has become a religion. You could even say it's like an idol for people in our culture today. Take Jim Gaffigan's joke where he laughed at the sad reality that many Americans would rather be caught picking up a prostitute than picking up McDonald's drive through So many people assign their value of others and themselves based upon the food they consume. We are the same old legalizers who once judged others for eating pork. Now, for me, the most convicting chapter was on leisure, our hobbies. Here's how I know this was the chapter that I needed the most. It wasn't long into the chapter where I began mentally arguing with the points that Zal was making. David, I typically refer to authors by their first name in my brain while I'm reading a book. David, it isn't that my running is a religion. I'm just a competitive person. That's all it is. Yeah, so I have one of those exercise watches that track my heartbeat and my steps and my speed and on and on and on. But, but I'm not being religious about my running. I just want to know how to improve. And my reading. I, I'm just striving to read 100 books this year because it's, it's kind of a cool goal. Not that I'll feel superior in comparison to others or Maybe just plain old better about myself because I've done it. It's not a religion, David. I'm just, I'm just competitive. Even when no one is competing against me. And suddenly I realized, oh, my hobbies are my second religion. He's right. And so I need to reevaluate the way I view running and reading to find my worth and my importance in Jesus Christ and not in these extras, these things that just should just be the side, the sprinkles on the joy of life. 
So here's my advice for reading Seculosity. First, you should read it. It's pretty eye-opening on how we've turned nearly every part of life into a religion and then the damage that that does to us. But second, when you find yourself arguing with David that you're just someone who likes to eat healthy or I can stay off social media whenever I want. Hold on, I, I just need to tweet something really quick here. Those places where you find yourself in the strongest disagreement with David, those might just be where you need to re-examine your life the most. I also really loved how the book ended. His advice on getting off the hamster wheel of seculosity was described as beautiful because it was all about grace. He wrote, I've run into too many former or recovering evangelicals to discount the deep-seated and oppressive performancism at work, where what matters more than what God has done for you is what you can and need to do for God. He then wrote the following on grace that should be the center of our faith, our religion. A religion of capital G grace would hold to Jesus Christ as the central revelation of who God is, and the cross as the central revelation of who Christ is. Not just in terms of sacrificial love, but in terms of law-fulfilling righteousness imputed to non-transformed sinners like you and me. For this reason, a grace-centered Christianity would not balk from heralding at the full volume and without fingers crossed the good news that nothing that needs to be done hasn't already been done. Grace says, Jesus is enough, and I can rest in him. And that's the key to overcoming seculosity. That is, I don't need my parenting style, or the quality of my marriage, or the accomplishment of my employment, or the number of books I'm going to read this year. I don't need any of those things to measure up. I am right with God because of grace. And I can rest in the grace of Jesus Christ and live for God without a need to fall into shame, or rise into pride because I'm handling the various aspects and parts of my life. I highly recommend Seculosity. It really touched me in a few areas of my life. I found it to be personal, profound, and yet lighthearted at the same time. And I gotta say, it would make for a really good read to start the new year.